Hello, this is Lee, specifically Lou Lely, and today I'm going to be drawing some Fakemon. Over the generations, many Pokemon are based on rather particular wordplay, especially when it can connect the Pokemon's name to a real living creature. Think Doxbun, who is a Dachshund and a bun. Dessert, donut, dog thing. There are also a few Pokemon that are directly inspired by food, such as, you know, Doxbun. With this plethora of examples to base some new Pokemon on, I have found four animals that are named after common foods that I will be attempting to design Pokemon after. Think of the chocolate chip sea star or the cauliflower jellyfish, which are both real animal names. I won't be designing either of the Fakemon for these two, at least for now, but they're good examples of the kind of prompts that I'm looking for. Note that this is my very first attempt at trying to draw in the Pokemon style, so th the replication will be expectedly flawed, but I've always wanted to design Fakemon of my own, and as the series has made it very clear throughout the generations, I really can't become a master without being a beginner first. I hope you can at least enjoy my first go at designing some new, unique Pokemon. My first Pokemon will be based on the Strawberry Finch. This is a cute little bird that can be found in tropical parts of Asia. They're often a bright red color with white spots all over, which is why they've been nicknamed after strawberries. This was probably the most straightforward Pokemon that I designed of the bunch. I just looked at examples of other bird Pokemon, of which there are many, um, and really made sure that it was properly chunky. I also tried to make the head have the general shape of a strawberry. Of course, a strawberry bird Pokemon also needs a crest of spiky green leaves that grow on the strawberry stem, just so the design isn't too simplistic. Add a couple of spots and this bird's ready to fly. This is Camberry, the tart Pokemon. Grass flying type. Camberries thrive in humid tropical areas and like to build their nests in various fruit trees. They take naps on top of red berries, such as Raz, Tomato, and Pomek berries, which acts as efficient camouflage. Farmers believe that allowing canberries to live in their orchards will make their fruit more plentiful and sweet. Whew. I'm not gonna lie to you. When I named this Pokemon, I thought that the bird it was based on was actually a strawberry canary. Um, thus, you know, the canberry. No, I, I misremembered. It is a strawberry finch, as I just said earlier in the video. So we're just gonna say um, that it was an inspired change and ignore that little flaw. This Pokemon definitely looks closer to an early gen bird Pokemon than a more modern one, but I think it's the first Fakemon that I've ever like really finished. It's definitely Pokemon looking. The second animal we're designing a Pokemon from is the Banana Slug. Warning, I am gonna have some slugs shown on screen starting now. I personally find slugs and snails to be pretty adorable. I mean, they're slimy and they're goopy, uh, and I really like their noses. Banana slugs are a common slug living in North America that is commonly bright yellow with blackish brown splotches. They can actually get pretty big, and they're skilled decomposers. All right, no more real slugs on screen. In designing slug-based Pokemon, I threw around the idea of a limbless sluggy body type, but it was too plain and to the common eye, kind of too gross looking. Instead, I tried to evoke the shape of like a friendly looking caterpillar and made the long body of the slug be a long tail instead. I actually first tried to make a design with a long antenna coming off the head like the stem of a banana, but it ended up looking very, very, um, phallic. So instead I added two little antennae that looked like the eye stalks of a slug and it worked out way better. Here is Banut, the mushy Pokemon, bug ground type. Banutes are born as a pale yellow color and spend most of their time eating compost underground. As they get older, they become a darker yellow color, and their bodies become softer, allowing them to slip under fences and doors to scavenge for rotten fruit to eat. Banute can grow their tails back after losing them, much like Slowpoke, which can then be baked into a sweet, fragrant bread. I got the name Banute obviously from a banana, but also from the popular notion that when snails and slugs stick their nose out, it's nicknamed nuding. Due to my struggle in making a design based on something as simple as a slug, I think that this is the Fakemon that doesn't quite hit the Pokemon style. Um, it's just a little off. The shape language is close, but it almost looks more like a Neopet to me. Still, I think the Banute is the cutest Pokemon I designed of this group, and so I think that has to count for something. The next animal we're making a Pokemon from is the Tomato Frog. These little guys are small, plump, and look like they're constantly keeping themselves from throwing up. 
As for my tomato frog Pokemon, I'm making him a bit more smiley since we already have a lot of frowning frog Pokemon. It was essential that I keep the round rotundness of like a fat tomato. He also gets some splats of tomato sauce on him, and also a little stem so that we know what we're looking at. I'd love to say that I was deeply inspired and had a great reasoning for this design, but I just wanted a really chunky frog. Meet Romato, the right Pokemon, grass type. Romato are said to have evolved from tomato berries that came in contact with a leaf stone, retaining both their redness and their roundness. Romatos enjoy curling their tails and heads into their stomachs and rolling themselves down hills, which is also a useful method for fleeing predators. Romatos are eaten by many Pokemon, so they are often wary of trusting strangers. The name Romato is a mix between tomato and Roma, which is one of the most commonly eaten types of tomatoes where I live. It also sounds like the word roam, which like most frogs, they like to wander everywhere their sticky feet can take them. I initially thought against making the name so close to the actual food item, but the tomato berry canonly exists in the Pokemon world, so it kind of felt unnecessary to complicate things. Finally, we have the Lemon Shark. We've got some very well-designed shark Pokemon already, and there is no world in which I will out-design Garchomp. So instead, I just thought that I would take the idea of a lemon shark as literal as possible and force myself to keep a strictly lemon shape as the body. I had no idea what the typing was going to be since it would be almost completely yellow and that it usually signals an electric type. But the actual lemon shark uses electro receptors to hunt at night, so that actually ended up working out perfectly. I know that it's controversial to make a swimming Pokemon not be a water type, but I actually think that there needs to be more of those in the Pokemon world, even if just to make surfing more interesting when you're like, you know, going around and doing battles, you're not just fighting water types. I also added a white square pattern on its back to mimic the ice cubes in a glass of lemonade. Speaking of which, this is Zaurend, the lemonade Pokemon, electric grass type. Zaurend lives in shallow waters, scouring for food while scaring off any possible competitors with its sharp teeth. Surprisingly, Zaurend is completely vegetarian and prefers a diet of fruit that falls in the water from overhanging trees. Zaurend uses the sugar from the fruit it eats to fuel its electric power. So this guy reminds me a lot of Sharpedo with his short shark body, but I think he differs enough that he looks like his own Pokemon. Since technically all of the animals I'm designing these Fakemon after are named after fruits, I realize that fruit is a component of each of their Pokedex entries. It's inevitable, I guess. It also means that three-fourths of these Fakemon are at least partially grass type. I could have probably been more creative and stretched the concepts further, but I'm just not willing to give up my initial instincts for their designs. This is my first Pokemon design video, so I can be more creative some other time. I hope you enjoyed watching me design some Fakemon, and if you have any favorites or other ideas for me to design Pokemon after, please feel free to leave a comment. I also hope you consider liking and or subscribing. Consider it an early investment for entertainment. Bye then!